Okay, so we're going to get this meeting started. Continue our meeting from the other room. We've been in executive session, and those reasons are stated on the um, on the um, thank you um, agenda. He can't use a computer. I can't use a microphone. <laughs> We have a brief, some brief announcements. This meeting is being broadcast on local TV and recorded for rebroadcast on local cable channels and on the internet. Um, the uh, Marine, Corps, Marine Corp Toys for Tots, new, unused, unwrapped toys may be dropped off at the Public Safety Building Complex at 401 Main Street starting November 1st through November 3rd, December 3rd. Holiday tree lighting is this Thursday, November 26th, starting at 6.30 on the training field, there'll be free hot chocolate and cookies. Please remember to bring your flashlights. There will be songbooks available to sing along. We'll do some caroling. Council on Aging and Board of Assessors Associate Informational Session on December 5th at 5.30 at the Council on Aging uh, office, in it, which was downstairs on the first floor, ground floor. Winter parking ban starts on November 1st and is effective through December. April uh, December. December 1st and is effective through April 30th, um, 2019. Joe, do you have anything? Nope. Archie? No. Just want to um, congratulate White Gate Christmas Tree Farm um, on this past Friday, which is um, the state considers Green Friday. And they pick out local um, farms, one in the east, one in the east region, one in the central region, one in the west region, um, and they were presented with a declaration. They were presented with a certificate from the state. The what was it exactly? Department of Agriculture. Thank you. The Department of Agriculture. The secretary was there. We had a tree cutting ceremony, and the tree, which was generously donated this year, is down in our lobby, which is from White Gate Christmas Tree Farm. Did I miss anything on that? I meant to have some notes on that, but uh, so I did all that by memory. Um, and that is it. Do you have any? I think it's two just very brief announcements of uh, meetings scheduled for later this week. Uh, two committees that haven't met for some time. Uh, the Harbor Committee is scheduled to meet this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, this will be their first meeting in a while. Where would that be held? Uh, that will be in the second floor meeting room. Okay. And on Thursday evening at 7.30, also on the second floor here, room, the Personnel Advisory Committee will have its first meeting in, in some time. And uh, I hear that we're missing one. We're, we're looking for a member. We're looking we for a member. for a, a third member of the committee. Preferably so somebody. Someone that, uh, hopefully someone that has some HR uh, experience. Either HR or organizational management experience, yes. And if they're interested, they might, might sit in on the meeting just to see what it's all about. Terrific. And yeah, uh, public meeting should be interesting. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Any? Uh, Mary, you're all set? Okay. So let's get it started. Um, I'll ask um, the planning board to come on up, and I, um, if they would, please. Um, and I have a um, brief thing from the town clerk for the reasons why we're here. So, um, pursuant Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 41, Section 11, within 30 days of receiving um, the resignation letter of John T. Sarkis, the remaining members of the planning board must formally notify the Board of Selectmen of this vacancy and request a meeting. The Board of Selectmen shall then schedule a meeting jointly with the planning board upon a minimum of one week notice at such uh, joint meeting of the boards, an interim appointment shall be voted upon. A majority vote by the Board of Selectmen and the remaining planning boards in attendance shall be needed to decide that appointment. The person appointed would then serve the remainder of the term until the date of the next scheduled annual town election after that date of the appointment. So this um, would go until the first Monday in May 2019. Um, I would personally like to thank John Sarkis for his um, Many years in commitment to the town on the planning board. His, um, his hard work and diligence and, and clear mind and reasonable thinking 
um, served this town well, and I wanted to thank him for that. He'll be uh, missed extremely. I would echo that. Um, okay, let's get this underway. Is there anything you want to say? Uh, just that uh, we have three of the current planning board members here. Brian Murphy, Ray Cook, and myself, Ann Bardeen. Steve Monahan is our current associate member. And we forward her name to you as our uh, candidate to serve out this uh, interim appointment to give us a turn. Uh, it seems to me that since it's, although this is a joint meeting, maybe since it's really your meeting, would someone from your group like to make the motion? You could. It's not necessary. It's, it, anyone could. Okay. Joe? Sure. You I, can in it. I, I move to appoint Kim Monahan uh, for the to the vacancy on the planning board for a term ending May 6, 2019. Second. second. Should move in second. Any discussion? Just maybe a little thank you for um, stepping forward. Um, I know it's not easy. It takes you know, it takes a lot out of your life and your personal life and family and so forth and so on when people uh, devote their time to these boards and committees. And I know the planning board is a busy one. Um, Right. And I'd just like to state that uh, we appreciate the fact Ken's been diligently attending and she brings a level of expertise to the planning board that will benefit the town as a whole. Excellent. That's good. Okay. If, oh, sure. Get a, get a chance to say something. Um, I, I do want to second that. I, I think she's going to be a very valuable member um, of the board. Um, we, I presume we're going to be surfacing a suggestion for another associate or at least advertising for that um, shortly with you as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we haven't really discussed it, but that'll come up. Well, there's a vacancy now, so I mean, Mary can post that. We'll post Absolutely. it on our website, and she puts it out on whoever's um, Perfect. Uh, on link to our um, announcements through the um, emails. They would get that. So if you could do that, Mary, that'd be great. Okay. Any more discussion? To contact the parking office. Yes because they would have to be put on our agenda to be then appointed. Well, isn't a, well, okay, we can deal with that later. I, there's, I think there's a process for appointing an associate. We'll figure it out and whatever it is it is, and Mary will, everything goes through and whatever that process needs to be, I think make sure we follow it. I think they are supposed to technically give us two I recommendations. Think they recommend and, it, yeah. yes. 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 Yeah. But if we don't have two, do you have to recommend two? How do I call and go out? We'll see. We can always recommend you as backup. There you go. I know. I know. I won't be voted on. So that hey, hey, Ray, whatever you really want will be there. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but there's an expression: "Be careful what you wish for." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything? Any other uh, jokes about Glenn? <laughs> okay. If there's, if there's not, let's call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Now, does she need to be? Yes, she does. One in. Yes, I, it's kind of a rhetorical question. I know you do. I don't know when your next meeting is. Mike's out in the hallway. Maybe he'll do it on your way out. And there he's standing up. I think he might. You do need to be sworn in. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. You didn't like my joke? Oh, I like your joke. <laughs> Look at license renewals. <sighs> Angus, you want to? Mm. That both, uh, for both the renewals before you, we have all the uh, required documentation. So, okay, Joe. So I move to approve the West Newbury Food Mart liquor license, retail license renewal for the year 2019 for all alcoholic beverages. Second. We moved and seconded. Can I, um, do we have, does it have, does this have to be annually? Can we do it? Does it have to be annually? We can't like push it out every two years? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve the uh, GN Enterprises West Newbury Pizza Company 2019 liquor license renewal for uh, wines and um, malt. Second. Second. It's been moved by Joe, seconded by Archie. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Request for waiver for insurance certificate for rental town uh, annex for a birthday party December 7th. Angus? Uh, this is a, uh, it's becoming a routine request at a uh, birthday party, estimated 20 people, and uh, 
uh, a strict reading of the policy would, would require them to provide uh, an insurance certificate naming the town as additional insured, carrying uh, one million per occurrence, three million aggregate. Um, uh, and that's uh, not, they're not having alcohol or anything. So anyhow, they're, they're before us uh, seeking a waiver of that requirement. Okay, so any discussion? Yeah, so um, I guess Mary, because you have the most history or you can answer too, I don't care. But um, this is like, I don't know, there's, to your point, there seems to be more of these. My observation, I'm very interested to hear what Mary has to say as well, but, but I'm not sure if what's going on here might simply be with the change of uh, administrative responsibility uh, and it's now being enforced literally. I don't know over the years if every birthday party has been requested to provide an insurance certificate, but I do know that since my office has been responsible, we have done it. So not talking about and I know Mary's going to answer, but not talking about these, but should we look at the policy as opposed to like having all these accept and then yes. set a policy that we're serious about, yes. whatever, whatever that is? Yes, that's exactly what we should do. And, and Mary and I have a meeting this Thursday scheduled with my IR insurer, and uh, it, it was already scheduled to review our renewal terms for 2019, uh, but we've added a couple of items to the agenda that Mary and I have of things we want to cover. This is one of them, to ask them very, what is the exposure, if any, for something like this? Well, and then also not that we have to follow somebody else off the off the ledge, but like what are, what are other towns, like how do we, what's the common practice? Mm -hmm. Or are, are the other thing, again, is are our rates too attractive? And we're getting too many. Well, we just doubled them. <laughs> too many attractions. Yeah, yeah. You pretty much hit it on the on the head. Um, you know, we we have um, waived it in many situations in the past since I started, and um, you know, it hasn't been an issue. People, you know, have been cleaning up after themselves and taking care of the building, and so very aware of that. So you know, it, it's been a hit or miss. Um, basically, the only reason why we required insurance is if it's alcohol. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we pretty much waived it. Okay. So, so to Joe's point, I, I do think that the bigger policy question is definitely something that's right. And so I've talked to Glenn about putting that on for the December 10th meeting because mm -hmm. by that point we'll have met with the I've already been so met advise you on what risk, if any, the town faces in not requiring insurance. We are, as you know, they are signing an indemnification, although I would question it, does that apply to everybody who's at that event? I don't know those are that's one of the Yeah, how can they I indemnify parents exactly. Exactly. Right. If, if if Mike goes to an event and the this birthday party like and he trips and falls, how they can't waive his rights. I, I agree with that. Right. Sounds nice. Okay. Do you take the sure. Meeting? I move to approve the Antonopoulos family. Uh, birthday party requests by An Aaron Antonopoulos for December 7th, 2018 at 6 p.m. Second. And waiving. And waiving the um, insurance requirement. We move and second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to approve the David Parrott, I guess his name is, birthday party request for December 16th, 2018, waiving the insurance requirement. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So expect to see this back on. In the I, I can think of some five-year-olds that could do three million dollars of damage pretty easily. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Okay. Uh, discussion with representatives of the bicentennial committee regarding budget uh, sponsors and fundraising. Wise, come on up. You think you're going to be coming to this many meetings when you both said, let's do it? <laughs> it it's right on top of us. <laughs> we would thank you. Okay, what's up? Just need a little bit of clarification. That's all. And the, go ahead. Um, Angus? Uh, well, I think the uh, memo that uh, Steve put out sets out the question pretty clearly. We had a 
meeting probably three weeks ago with uh, finance staff and a uh, very good meeting with the committee, just going through uh, purchasing and uh, contracting and these kinds of things. And this is where some of these issues came up for discussion. And uh, we recognized immediately it was a, you know, it's a big topic. And so we uh, didn't put it on the uh, November 13th agenda because uh, we wanted to allow time to kind of more fully pick out the questions and that's what you have in front of you. Uh, Mike McCarran, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I believe has advised that legally there's no constraint on the funds that were appropriated by town meeting. The real question here is what was the expectation that was created at the time people passed the vote and of the uh, monies that are raised, is there an expectation that that will reduce what is expended and, and there's some detail in there as well. So before we do the questions, uh, Mike, wasn't there an appropriation in addition to the 140,000 like a year is 3,000, 3,000? 3, 3, Three of twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So it's one hundred and forty plus twenty that town meetings appropriated. Correct. One sixty. One sixty. Yeah. Okay. So, right. That's what I thought. I just didn't know the number. So then the other question is, um, do you have like a a budget of what your current thinking is? How much you're going to spend? We submitted a budget. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And we are now in the process of spending money. We're yeah. We're making free contracts and things like that. Um, and so um, we're in the process of. Okay. I, now, just, so, you know, our plan is not to um, expand what we plan to do in a particular way. Um, the, the reason I asked is I mean, I manage like millions of dollars in my paying job, and you have an estimate. That you start with, and then once you're into day one, uh, the estimate it's, it changes all the time. So, but if that's fine, if that's the original estimate is still the estimate, that's okay. I just that's, wondered. That's what we're working on now because we're just really starting to go out for, for costs and yep. measures and you know various things, um, and we're trying to stay within the the amount that was appropriated, but it was an estimate, and so. Yeah, I think the, the real question here is, is more of the clarification question because we've, there's been a really nice response from the town to our plan. People are really excited about it. And we've had offers of gifts in kind that it's, it's hard to understand how we would um, handle that under this scenario. I mean, someone's donating um, their facility, We don't understand how we handle that particular kind of donation under this scenario. I mean, I think my own opinion is you have $185,000 to spend maximum because that's what's appropriated. And if somebody wants to donate something on top of that, that's great. It would just enhance the event. Well, that's what we would hope. Okay. I mean, that's what I would think. Okay, good. So you want to go through, you have, um, so you have six questions that you kind of wanted, that are bullet here that you want to have answered tonight? Sounds like you pretty much answered um, so, but the, but have we answered the avenue? So hypothetically, then um, you know, I I drop dead next week, and my wife wants to give you fifty thousand dollars to enhance the, the, the uh, celebration in my name for some weird reason. I'm not sure she'd probably do that, but um, fifty thousand. Yeah, let's play. Let's play. Let's play along. Well, you're worth more than that. A <laughs> hundred thousand. I don't even think they should give that much, but okay. Um, but so my wife gives that money. She gives it to whom? Where is it held? And the town of West Newbury. And how is it then uh, accounted for and then being able to be spent? I think that's actually, yes. That's, that's the, I think that's the question. Because if somebody wants to give you uh, flowers for the event and say, hey, my donation is going to be a centerpiece. You know, Newtons could say, I, I want to give a centerpiece for your gala and I want to be in your program. And that's, a, that's easy because they're going to give that. 
But if somebody wants to give money, how how are we handling that? Because that is part of the question. And yeah, but he, well, he said everything was answered, but I didn't think that one was answered. So that so th I think that's the only really question that we have. So anything that comes in would be enhanced anyway if it was an in-kind thing or a cash donation or hey whatever it is. You know what I mean? The hoedown, we're gonna you know we're gonna let you use you know hay bales and this and from whatever. Those are all in-kind contributions, but it's the cash thing that we, I think we want to try to get our hands on. So I think on the accounting question, we do, we do have a good handle on that because the uh, legislation that was enacted by the vote of town meeting uh, specifically authorizes the uh, establishment of a special fund for the deposit of any such funds raised for a bicentennial. Uh, so that was the mechanism that the fund was created. So any money comes into that fund and goes out of that fund. And when we met a few weeks ago, primary objective was simply to review on the expenditure of funds or the contracting of funds, what are the standards that apply? It's the same standards that apply to any public purchasing entity. So, you know, up to 10,000 sound business practices, 10 to 25 bidding, over 25 central register. And so we met with the uh, treasurer and the accountant to kind of go through what the accountant looks for as invoices come in, that she needs to have the contract on file. She needs to have documentation that any purchasing was done consistent with uh, 30B and so forth. So we reviewed a lot of those kind of nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. There is not right now a staff liaison to the committee. Uh, so the committee has oversight of how those funds are spent. Uh, one thing we talked about, it, I think it might be valuable to have a staff liaison just so there's uh, they have a go-to yeah a closer relationship to make sure that as purchases are made that if there's any the warrants are made up properly and the funds and signatures are done and all that kind of stuff best yeah. practices yep okay uh, we haven't done that yet uh, but I think the committee was open to that it seemed like a good idea I don't know how formal we, we need to be it's really just finding the staff person who you know can go to all the meetings and, and really be engaged in. I think that's why we have a town manager well and I think it I would be Natural to be, to be. No, I don't mean for you to uh, do it. I meant okay. for you to decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if it's you, it's you. If you yeah. don't want it to be, okay. Yeah. So, excellent. So, anything else? So, I think on the mechanical questions, I think we're in good shape. I think really it's the policy question, which I mean, I think I heard what they heard, which is that the anything other money is appropriate. So, that money is appropriate. You can run about that enhances the event. I think it just enhances things. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can. Mm -hmm. And it is not our intention to make a huge, bigger, better uh, mm -hmm. section out of this, but it was a preliminary budget. And mm -hmm. as we do go out and, and get those appropriate vendors and things, um, and the budget falls short in some places, and it's a little bit over and over because it was an estimate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, 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 we shouldn't be looking at spending much more than than what we originally suggested, but you know, we can have that much Good. Thank you for coming in. Thank Angus, you. One, one last thing. Uh, uh, Angus made it very clear to, to me and some members of the committee that it was uh, best practice to make sure no money for alcoholic beverages go through the town at all. Well, not just best practice, that's just a kind of a bright line. So that, it's a lot. That, that was real simple for us, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then, then we got to, we, we've done a lot of work with sponsors and we're going to continue, especially after. Well, alcohol and marijuana, now that marijuana is legal. <laughs> I don't know, did they change that law yet? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 in any case, I, I, I lowered the price uh, of the. Uh, Black Tie uh, and, and, and didn't say anything about the bar other than having an open bar in there. You know, just took it out. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, no, but hold on, hold on. But if you, but that's not. There's no town money being spent for that. No. So you, that that, no. that is but fine. Here's, here's the question. That's a ticket. If if we, but it's going through the if, town. If an open no bar is allowed, say seven thousand dollars. Okay, and we were to come into a sponsor that said, I would pay that $7,000. Okay, 
Okay. I understand what you're saying. Let's yeah. say that happens, okay? Because that, that sponsor wouldn't be able to pay the money to the town, I don't think. Nope. They would have to make it pay directly. Nope. They would have right. to go directly. Right. So I think that would be legal. Um, yep. I'm asking you. Yes. So, oh, it's the Oakland Bar portion of it. So, but, but so the they town, can they can just pay the venue. Right. right. There you go. So, I'm sorry. Just explain. But would we be able to to recognize them as a contributor on on something that's still an official no, town sure. function? Uh, yeah, I don't see that there would be any problem. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. It would be a very appropriate donation for a private party, but, but a, a public dollar can't go toward alcohol. Okay, exactly. A public dollar can't go through alcohol. But people are buying tickets. So there, are, there is no... But that money is coming. I understand. I, just, I have to say this because it makes no sense to me, but I just want to be able to get it off my head. I understand. So public money is not being spent on alcohol. It's only being tracked so the, the alcohol is being spent by private people, but we're just accounting. All we're doing is accounting for it to us. Mm -hmm. Well, because yes. the funds are passing through, the it goes in and it out. becomes a public dollar. So if the tickets provided that the funds were not paid to the town treasurer, but were paid, say, directly to the facility, which I'm not suggesting that would be a good idea, but I, I suppose, I, I don't know about that. I would check with Mike on that. It's too late. Uh, no, I know. I'm just saying hypothetically, but but where the funds are being collected by the treasurer and the check to the facility is going to be cut by the treasurer. Uh, but does it, does that make sense to you? Just the town collects the that, money. That was the first scenario. I, I think you and I understood that if, if the uh, say the bank that the somebody's money wrote a check directly to Grove and Fairway, then we're good. We're cool. Yep. And and uh, David. Raise a very, very good question. Is is it still good for us to, to we have volumes of really nice uh, um, calendars of events and mm -hmm. things like that to, to recognize that, that bank number X uh, in, in there, even though their money did not go through the ten dollars. So, mm -hmm. so this is in two and a half months. When are the tickets going on sale? Ready to go. And we're thinking maybe we should let the holidays, and we're already getting a lot of requests. So I, um, we're having a hard time with that question. It's a very, not very Actually, if, I think if you guys want to weigh in on this, I would appreciate it. The invitations are printed. I don't have them in hand, but they're ready to go. Um, and there's, a, there's an RSVP card, which gets sent to the town, and the money goes to the town. I was concerned because of the holiday season that these things might get lost in the mail and whatever and, you know, because it's busy, busy mail time and there's a request for money coming every other day and whatever. But if we wait until after January 1st, that doesn't leave very much time. time. What date is it again? February? February 23rd. Middle of February. So I've had... I'd start doing I've it as fast as I can. I think ASAP. Yeah, I would too. I would start doing it. Well, okay, you... you and I would and I would uh, ask the town um, to um, put on their website and to notify everybody with who's hooked up, saying, uh, "Hey, look for your invitations for the thing. They're coming in the mail." Yeah. Make an excellent That's Christmas good. present. Yeah. Have well, we? Then, how much are the tickets now? One hundred ten. Yeah, don't sell out. I want to. Well, please. Okay. Have have um, have we sent invitations to the governor and congressmen and representatives? I'm anxious about exactly how to do that um, as soon as possible. I think we're late. We are, we are sending invitations we're, to. We're late. Oh, we're late. To but decide I did not. what things we think we can't invite them to everything. So. Right. And no, the black I, the black tie thing. Also, I don't, want that? To, I don't want to send them an invitation to the black tie gala that says please send your money to Westbury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we should probably find yeah, that. We have to get, get on. Get on. So I need to to send a sec separate invitation. Okay, and then I'm going to send an email to the 
And that was the yeah. question. At that and also all of the other no, events. No. no, I don't want to ask them to pay hey, to come to that event. So I, I have a few ideas. Okay. So I, I would do that as soon as possible and start ask, I would start asking everybody who you want to ask as dignitaries tomorrow and send out the invitation tomorrow. You're only talking about maybe a half a dozen people and only half of them are going to come. So what's the difference? Yeah. Okay. No, but that's exactly where we are. Okay. So Good. I would get going on that one. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you, guys. Okay. Review of draft updates to open space and recreation. And I, I know I uh, sent you an email late this afternoon, but in the event uh, that you didn't receive it, uh, I'll just summarize. So we have Marlene Switzer is here uh, from the Open Space Committee. Uh, they have prepared the draft update to the Open Space and Recreation Plan. It's been, what, about nine years since? It's been nine years. Nine years since the last one. So it's a very substantial document. Uh, we did receive it last Wednesday uh, with a request for this board's comments by this Friday. In light of the short timeline of the holiday, the Open Space Committee has said there would not be any, uh, any trouble whatsoever if the board continues its deliberation to its meeting two weeks from tonight. So I would, I would appreciate that, that if you wouldn't mind. Yes. Yeah, so Is there anything you want to highlight? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I was actually trying to go through it, but I, I put in a couple of hours and I didn't get, only got halfway done. I, so uh, I read the whole thing and I have a number of questions. But go ahead. Go. So, so I, hold on for one second. But let him go. Do you, did you want to make some type of presentation first or highlight any big changes or anything like that? Or you just would like to answer some questions? Why don't we start with that? Answer the questions and also to let you know that you're gathering until the 10th. Should you do this anyway you want to Good. Archie? No, I didn't, I didn't have questions. I just wanted to say that I had trouble getting I was looking at the maps and everything else. It, it's time consuming. Yeah. Joe? So, okay, I'm going to start big and narrow down. What's the purpose of this? Okay, this is something that is required by the Department of Conservation and Recreation in order for us to, in order for the community to apply for any grants that are, um, are offered through that department. So, for open space and recreation in particular, there may be others that touch on it. So, we have to file what is considered to be a current plan according to the schedule that they set now, previously was five years, in which case we would have updated this in 2014. Um, there were a, a large number of changes within the committee, and it, it uh, fell to some new members, I being one of them, and um, so it has been nine years. However, there has been some thinking on the part of DCR to make it a seven-year process. So we will not need to file another one of these, update another one of these until 2025, I think it is. Okay. Is there, is there anything else that we do with it besides file it? Um, well, initially we made quite a few copies. It was expensive to print that money, and now we have the online opportunity and we keep it online for the board to refer to it. Um, in particular, there is a really uh, drill down to the final point. Uh, Can you speak into the microphone a little bit better, please? A priority parcel. We need it close. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, the city worked very hard in updating the priority parcels using the assessor's Where are they? They are actually in section five. It's uh, what page? This doesn't have page numbers on it. No, but it is section five. I know that's because that, it really is a draft, and um, it's not even a problematic for us. Um, I don't know what section five is. I have no idea. It's um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you become more familiar with it as I have. <laughs> very comfortable when you go through all of this. Um, all of this, I should say, this is, um, this it was drafted initially, I think, I can't recall, I can't remember as I said, but I know that we've been doing these, we've done several, as required by the state. So, so to require take, that we do these, we do exactly what we did. Yep, oh, hold on for one second. Okay, yeah, I'll I, I'll get it. Did you yeah. find it? I want to. I, yeah, I, I just fine. want you to get your. I want you to get your answers. Yeah, I didn't get an answer. I'm still on the priority parcel list. But yeah, I understand. So section five. Oh, can I just see it? Inventory. So the uh, priority parcel list uh, in the past that I've seen uh, is this. Is this it? Protected private yeah. parcels. Yes. Yeah. So um, two comments on that. A, it's a really big list. So like. Every non 
it's like you've got everything. So it's not a priority parcel list and it's not prioritized. So, and just my own opinion, I think it's too big and it's not prioritized. So like, it's not usable. It's almost like you just put everything on there you threw everything against the wall. So if anything it, came it, up, it, it makes say that hey, this is a prior, this is in our priority part. So, well, everything's in your priority. It part. makes the list meaningless. Yeah. So that would be a critique. That would be the first critique that you would find out from. The, as I felt the same way. It was just everything. I think that uh, Wendy Reed and Patricia Reed and I went uh, once a week to go over the various changes, and that in particular was something that we really labored with because we didn't want it to be unmanageable or unmeaningful. Um, there. The matrix that was created is required by the state to rate according to, as you can see, on the matrix, various conditions. Mm -hmm. If you were to take the parcels that are considered open space over a certain size and determine how it ranks according to all these different criteria, so we did, um, there were many things from the prior um, report that we threw out because they were too small. To Kind of, they didn't really meet the criteria, but these, I can assure you, we went over the assessor's map multiple weeks and looked at, does this really connect to something else that would create a wildlife corridor, which is one of the, the criteria, or that would make trails connect to each other, or would be meaningful over the state. Yep. So is there a criteria from the state to saying that a list can be every parcel in town, or is it saying like, hey, we want five, we want ten, and we would like you to rank them because it doesn't seem like they're ranked either. That, that's my point. Yeah, I, 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 so I'm just trying to get the answer to that if there is I one. I really think that the, we really feel that the, some of the most important value in, it, in this report is the primary parcel list because um, it's something that is meant to guide you and any other within the planning board when someone comes before them and, and proposes a development and it's not apparent to them that there is. Let's say the ash swamp is there. That's exactly my point, though, because yeah. if I go to this list and look at it, I don't know if it's like a very important place or not. So, so that's I, our point. So it doesn't help us. So I'll give you an example. It actually hurts your cause. Oh, so, so I'm, I'm going to give you an example. So if two, if two, um, just say, no, I'm sorry. If two parcels came up at the same time, okay, for development, just say. So you, the first thing I would do is go, oh, let's go to the open space um, um, party parcel list. Yeah, parcel list, and say, okay, which one means a lot more after these rankings? And I would say, well, neither of them do. So which one do we save, and which one do we don't? So I think I'm just trying to be very I, simplistic of I, trying I, to bring it down. I mean, you know, in terms of the number of X's, is, is, is do we say, well, this one's got six <laughs> X's and this one's got two? Is, 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 that, is, that, is, you know what I mean? is that better? I don't know if it is better. Because maybe one of the, it might be the only hilltop view or whatever it, left in town. Left so in it's town, even more even than though it doesn't have, land. doesn't have any of the other things. So, so even that is kind of a subjective thing. I would take back to the committee, you have all three selectmen very strongly saying this. Right, right. That's a, we, that's a we, big have to, we have to do this like uh, the Division One football. We have to have a we have to have a top twenty five. <laughs> I'm gonna pick a number. Yeah. Twenty five does not seem unreasonable. Ranked. Ranked. Oh ranked. 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 And, okay. I, and I will not I, I have to say that we grapple with the same thing because there isn't any, there is no mandate from this, no requirement that we give a top five or ten. No, the, the, for, the, for, the, for the basis of the Commonwealth, maybe that's true, but Not for us. the it's basis town. of the town, I think it, if you've done this exercise, a tremendous amount of work, then I think just go the one, one further step. So I think you get our point on that, Joe. Yeah. I, don't so, mean, I don't want to keep on beating it. Beating it. No, okay, no. so this... Oh, I add, this yep. is on that point. So, so in, let's say there was this list of 25 prioritized. Mm -hmm. My concern would be that those on the top three or four or five, that, that that's, the owner would perceive a premium on their land that could disadvantage the town in a potential acquisition. So my question is to Mike as to whether there would be any basis to keep this prioritized list, an executive Pro session document, in the, on the theory that Having the public could disadvantage the town's negotiation. That's a very good point, Angus. That you know, I'd have to think.
We already have. I like to have a question that might make my sense. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck. Right there. <laughs> and, and for overall, the, 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 the workbook that they use, but it does give us, in fact, it's suggested when you are requesting that you keep the specific addresses um, separate from what we file, that we do that. And so uh, the, we, we have that information. We, this, this is what, why we did this. Way. First of all, it was required, but it doesn't say it's going to be useful. And we decided this wasn't very useful the way that it done in the past. Mm -hmm. And also, there were a lot of purchases um, that have gone through approval that were, people were unaware, the awards were unaware of how it fit together from conservation plans in open space. Okay, we, we have an action okay. plan for seven years that we're required to file also. And amongst them are a number, and it would be in this plan, that say we will be more active, more involved in um, interpreting things like that list or in saying this is not an important part of the list. You know, there, are, there are comments that are made in these meetings in good faith. We need to keep this. I mean, it's a lot of land, things like that. Um, those are not necessarily um, based on effect. And I think that the, the assessor's maps are current now, and that's how it was created. We have an action plan because every year we will go through, our committee will go through, and we will change. So if it's sold, we will change the plan okay. to be available for you for decision. Mm -hmm. So you said you're required by the state to file every five years. Maybe it'll be every seven years. Seven. So is it? What the, the it that's required to be filed, is that a open space and recreation plan? That's the it. So, okay, as I read this, and it does say, and recreation on here, I didn't see any recreation in here. So, I, uh, yeah, I read, I, I read every page. So, I, I think you're, did you talk to the park and recs? Yes. Did you incorporate what they said? It doesn't look like it. Where it was appropriate to begin here, it was in here. There really are a lot of places that it isn't even an open space issue. The history of the community is things like the environmental assessment. But we did involve, and I would say that this is the first time we've involved recreation at this point because I was the one who said, it's a recreation plan, and we haven't even talked to them. And we did have a whole... I mean, the only thing that I saw, and I'm, I'm kind of making a, a, a vast, a big generalization, the only thing that I saw was like walking on trails. I mean, there's a lot of trail stuff, but not really, I think, the full uh, realm of recreation. So, I mean, again, I'm talking as an individual. Um, I mean, I, I, I would view this as incomplete. Well, we, we, there was, myself. There was, there was um, talk about the done. Yeah. There is, there is a yeah. section. I mean, I, I yeah, understand I how you felt that way because, especially after the most recent experience with the done and, and this would be a perfect know. opportunity to come together, but this doesn't do that. But it, I mean, and I'm, I'm not that. If you read it that way, then that concerns me because you're reading it. I and I'm not biased either way. I have no biases. Right. And I, I'm so I'm just a general member of the public who read every page. There are sections where it says community needs and um, managing needs. So, okay, but there's still a responsibility that it's an open space and rec regardless of what he gave you or didn't give you, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, a, there's, in my opinion at least, there's still a responsibility to incorporate recreation uh, a lot more than how it's, uh, I mean, it's very superficial, I think. Uh, and I'm, I'm almost, I have one more comment. Um, so I don't have page numbers to tell you, so I can hand you these, but um, you, it references the CPA, and it says the purpose of open space as defined. I think it says open space and recreation. Uh, that's one. You can have these pages. And then in the, uh, you have a, uh, 
medium household income and it's if you I'm not sure how the towns were picked out that are on here so it's it looks like it's most of the towns that border us but it if that's the criteria it uh, Haverhill borders us, it's not on here, and you have Georgetown on here, it does not border us. So I just wasn't, I don't know if there was a rhyme or reason. And then lastly, you have the address of the town office building as 385 Main Street, it's 381 Main Street, so you can have these. So I guess you did read it. Oh, I read the whole thing. Okay, did, did, are, is somebody taking notes on, on what we've talked about? So. At next meeting, we can even when I have and I even read it through again. That we'll um, then we'll formalize our um, opinions over to them. Okay. Anything else? No. We appreciate your hard work. I really appreciate your input. We'll um, this will be on our next agenda for us to have it discussed. I don't. You don't need to be here. If you're more than welcome to come, obviously it's a public meeting. But then after that meeting, we'll be sending over our comments and suggestions. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. And there is a. Uh, Oh, yeah, definitely. And there will be a meeting of the Open Space Committee on December 12th, so two days after the next election meeting. So we'll make sure to get those comments in the next day. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Enjoy yourself. Uh, Review of Town Manager's Draft Calendar for the 2000 for the FY20 budget process. So I uh, used as a starting point the uh, calendar that has been prepared last uh, uh, summer for the whole year, and uh, many of the dates I've included are the same as that. A couple of the dates are a little different, which I can uh, highlight for you, and uh, I've left a couple of dates blank because uh, that's really the meat of the discussion that I see uh, tonight. Uh, so the first big milestone is the uh, adoption of budget capital priorities and the approval of the budget message. The board could act on either of those things tonight if you're prepared to do so. Uh, alternatively, since there is a joint meeting a week from tonight with FinCom, uh, I've roughed in December 3rd is the date, but again, that's, that certainly doesn't preclude you from voting anything tonight. Uh, the next date in the calendar that I've proposed is uh, when the budgets are due from department heads and town officers. Uh, this is uh, consistent with the Department of Budget bylaw, and the bylaw refers to department heads, town officers, and boards, committee, commissions. I have uh, suggested that we stagger those, uh, recognizing the boards, committee, commissions, uh, you know, have to meet, and so uh, we could leave it at the same date, but I thought giving them an extra two weeks might be uh, practically helpful for them. Can I ask a question? Of course. So if the board's committee's commissions is not due to you until January 18th, when will you have an initial draft, uh, draft budget for either the FinCom or the selectmen to review? Well, so this is where... Because that pushes it out a little. Well, it does. And I think the, you know, maybe we want to start there with when, what is your expectation for when when my recommended budget is provided to the FinCom, because I, I see a iterative process where the departmental budgets come in. There's a back and forth that will happen, which uh, may or may not include the FinCom. It could include the FinCom. Those, that back and forth could happen at those FinCom working meetings in January and February. Um, and then what would come out of that would be my recommended budget, which would either be uh, recommended as is or as modified both by the bank and by the but, Yeah, but you have to have a starting, yep. so, I mean, that's something that you really have to do with the department heads, have a starting piece of paper for them to begin mm -hmm. discussion. So that's more what I was thinking oh, about. Oh, I'm going to send them something as soon after, I mean, it could be tomorrow, it could be a week from tomorrow, depending on whether, you know, when, when the calendar is set. Mm -hmm. uh, I would let the department have to know uh, as soon as I could. And I, I could send something out tomorrow regardless what happens tonight just to bring them into the loop on what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's, it, it starts with when it ends. It, we have to have a final approval by uh, late in March. I think you have on here March 18th, which makes sense. So, I guess working backwards from that, 
giving the Finance Committee, together with yourself, enough time to deliberate in the past, and I think the past is going to change, but in the past they've always advocated to get it early, like the third week of January. But um, I think if they get a more refined budget than they've gotten in the past, you know, the, well, they have to give I, them enough time to debate it. Right, but yeah, I mean, everything that's submitted to me is obviously a public document, and so I think really the question is, as I'm going through that back and forth process with departments or with boards, committees, commissions, uh, I'd be, I wouldn't have any objection to doing that concurrently with the finance committee review, uh, but to the extent that there may be uh, sticking points where a budget I recommend isn't, doesn't line up exactly with what was proposed to me. Uh, that may need to go back to that board or commission. So I think there has to be enough time for that to play out. Uh, yeah, but so that shouldn't stop. I mean, you should do your draft and then let them. If, right. Because somebody's going to disagree. Yeah. That's going to happen. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know. So that question, you want to go finish it? Was that a question answered? Mm, well, the question was when will we have an initial draft budget? Well, it, I guess it depends so, so on. Not on really. What's mm -hmm. your. I mean, just compiling the budgets that I receive from everybody else, I could compile them fairly quickly. But that's, but you know, I'd rather send something out once, once it's actually. It's once vetted a little bit. This is yeah. my recommended budget. So I think that's going to take, you know, four to six weeks. I don't know if that, um, you know. So I think, I, you know, I think if we had a recommended budget by about mid February, I think that still gives you guys you know, a full month before you would actually be looking to vote on anything. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, to me, seems like a reasonable time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and within that six weeks, like I said, everything's public. I'm, I'm not looking to do anything that's... And you're working with the FinCom within the... the your, your, yeah. Your concern is the, so the FinCom gets it in time. Oh, I think we'd want to, like, look at it just to understand it, too, so that Which we, we would. Yeah, and I would anticipate essentially copying this board on everything that goes to the FinCom. I wouldn't see it as a standing item on this board's agenda. Right. Kind of no, no, no. Yeah, board. that defeats the purpose. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, no. It's, it should be. I want you guys to be in the loop on what's being proposed and what's being considered. Okay. So, in, in, in the past, they've finance directors done it by mid-January, given the their proposed budget to us in the finance committee. Finance committee's gone away, vetted it with the finance director and whoever it is, the department head or board or commission. Sometimes they've, most of the time, they've come back and talked to us once or twice through the process because they have a question on either direction or clarification. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of saying the same thing. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, so Joe, I mean, I think another thing is, is that, that with the in the previous process, uh, there might have been just, I don't, I don't know, pick a department, the, the, the DBW, there might have been vetting of the, the, of the department's budget through the FinCom, uh, and Angus is, is going to be doing a lot of that, uh, that work ahead of time with the, with the department heads, hopefully he cutting down some of the some of the uh, time frame that that the uh, FinCom would ha would would need to to spend uh, going over individual items on the budget. I think uh, Angus wants to drill down on a lot of those things and get some of that information and and save some of sort of basically sort of basically saving some of the FinCom's time on that. Right, right. kind of what yeah. the finance directors have done in the past. Basically, to a certain extent, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I, one thing I, I want to highlight in the in the next item uh, on the draft budget message, one thing I put in there is that uh, you know I think the proposed well, budget. Okay. Well, if we're, I'm not. The proposed budget would include, in what I've recommended, uh, the FY20 proposed by the department, board, committee, or commission, as well as the FY20 proposed that I bring forward. And what I'm saying with that is if a department submits me a budget and I submit a budget that's different, I want it to be clear to the FinCom that it's different. I'm not trying to hide mm -hmm. that, you know. Of yeah, course. You know, so that, that way you see, okay. Of course. 
and, and that's how I've seen it done elsewhere. Typically, the no, you know the co columns will be the department head, the manager. Yeah, that makes sense. No, back, we, so everyone can track. That's fine. How it changes. Okay. Okay. Everything else kind of speaks for itself. Do you have any questions, Joe or Archie, on this? Nope. I mean, I'm fine with. I mean, so I um, my my only thing about the um, uh, the CIC is that giving is that the uh, correct because the CIC has to report to the board of selectmen with their that, that that's the bylaw that's the bylaw date. I know. And is this is this within the realm within that time frame? That's what it is. You mean possible? Wait, wait, what do you mean? Well, in other words, is they're supposed to report so many weeks before the town meeting and stuff? Is is, is that correct? That's what that is. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's all I asked. Yeah. I I would be totally open to, and I think in practice we'll be getting them my proposed capital program well ahead, well ahead. Uh, if they're looking to get something to do three eighteen, more like January. Early yeah, 318 is way too late to do anything no, practically. I, so so that's, what that's, that's, that's what I'm driving. The committee mm -hmm. will be recommending, but I'm putting the whole thing together and, and giving it to them, and it may not take them long to, to review it at all. But but anyhow, I do. I noticed in here I have a proposed capital improvement program that I bring forward. I, I have it as concurrent with budget. That could be ahead of the budget. That could be well ahead of the budget. Okay. So that, that I think that would be more helpful to them. Uh, Good. So maybe that could be like, uh, you know, that, that could even be like January uh, 7th or something. I think that's totally doable. I have it a lot is, of raw material. It's just it is what it probably is. a couple of days of work is, is really all. So I'm going to pencil that in for January 7th. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, the only, this is just a comment. If you, you know, middle of February or sooner if possible. But whatever. Or when you over said the overall recommended budget. Yeah. 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 I think in February is, is what I had set out, and I think that's very doable. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think for next year we might want to pull things back a little bit more. Start sooner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Well, the the the, the trouble is always that the, the Kentucky budget is is where it is, and we're not going to change that date, and so that. No, but the rest that, of it. That's a. That's the big budget item, and so that does change things. Yeah. So well, two other items: uh, the departmental and organizational structure and the original selectman calendar. It had that in June, but I really feel that needs to be with the budget I propose because mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what makes sense. Uh, and then the other. Well, the reason that it was in not right or wrong, but the reason it was in June was that town meeting appropriates the money so then we vote on what was appropriated. That's why it was there. Right, and I think that makes sense for the employee wage schedule, and I've left that at the bottom. I haven't put in a date, but just sometime after town meeting, because I think at that point you're approving wages. Right. But in terms of org chart... Um, oh, stuff changing. Yeah, you'd have right. to have that. You'd sure. Have to have that, yeah. 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 Oh, the yeah. Budget's paying yep. Totally, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So I will uh, I'll polish this off with the, with what we discussed uh, yep. and then get moving. I think everyone's clear on it, so I'll just broadly circulate it. Yep, I'm fine. We'll start it. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Message. Discussion of Board of Selectmen's budget message for FY20. You don't have anything on this, do you, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would. I just wanted to okay. let let Joe have the floor and. And just to say that I agree with every one of them. Well, and I was actually going to say the same thing. Sure. I, I agree with what you wrote. I agree with what I wrote. I don't think there's anything wrong. So the only question would be there's some duplication. So just to work through whatever's kind of duplicative or you have some blanks. So yes, and those are intended for discussion tonight. Right. So some of them were kind of here, but it still should be talked about, though. Right. Yeah. Talk. Okay, so in uh, so we're going to take uh, the first page of item H and say everyone agrees to that. And so we're now going to the second page, which is my memo of November 24th. Uh, the first question in there is the first bullet point is uh, whether you want to specify a change to the estimated taxpayer impact of plus or minus a certain percent. 
in Joe's, uh, he put in a 2% maximum. Uh, maximum. And so if that's the will of the board, then that's what I will write in here. Well, I make a motion to. But the, in, there's a there's a other question that goes in tandem with that. Oh, wait, which is, do the, we rely on free cash appropriation to meet that right. objective or not? Right. And I, I think I know what this board's opinion is, which is that it should not rely on free cash. That's what I've been hearing consistently. And that's fine, but it's a big change because free cash has been appropriated for many years in a row to balance the budget. So that could effectively be... Well, not uh, to balance uh, the budget, well, but to keep the growth. To keep, to keep the yeah. Okay, I hate to, to, right. to go to this down this road and we argue about this again. But let's go. But here we go. Okay. What? If we want to reduce F Y19. We are in FY19 now. Mm -hmm. Certified free cash to a maximum of 5% of the op operating budget. Well, I don't know how we do that without using some of free... It, it, you, it's what are you going to use the cross purposes. On? You say we don't want to use the... We don't want to use so free can cash I tell you the intent? to go... No, well, let me finish. You, want to, you don't want to use free cash to to go for the operating budget, but you want to you want to use it up. So what do you want to use it up on? Okay, let make any sense. Okay, let me say the intent then. For so don't look at the words. Here's the intent. Okay. So the intent was to follow the recommendations made by the DLS for stabilization for well, that whole list of things. I think right. they had a list of like seven things. That's what I meant by that. I don't know if that's what I said, but that's what I meant. And that's why it says FY19. But but how do we know what free cash will be until the year is is out? Well, you can guesstimate based on mm -hmm. town meeting what is in front of them. And so then you take the balance and start to apply it as they recommended. So but here so here's my here's my question. We uh, you, the DLS recommends that we have these different uh, stabilization accounts, and I have no problem with that. But you don't want to use any free cash to fund any of those. Mm. So how no, do you? No, I wasn't how, saying that. You say you Where? want to you want to fund stabilization from the operating budget. So therefore, we're going to tax people to fund the stabilization, even though we have all this money in free cash. Uh, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not following. In other words, um, to, to, to lower our free cash to 5%, uh, we need to... We need put to, it in those accounts so, and put it in those areas. Okay, but so then maybe we don't need to fund the capital stabilization account through an operating... Maybe. I mean, there's an adjustment year. There's a, there's an adjustment phase in timing. But you see, you see my point. But yeah, everyone yeah. always gets mad when we use free cash to fund the stabilization. But we're going to have to do that again. Let's, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense to you? It does. I think that getting to 5%... You have to spend uh, the money somewhere. Budget year, you know, there's such a large amount that they, you have to spend it on something. In, so yeah. I think, I think if that's uh, let's put it on a. We put in a clause to the extent practical, or, or just something so that yes, we're not stuck with it. it yeah, I didn't mean it to be absolute, but to directionally move that way. I mean, maybe I think if we have it on a as part of the budget review process, if it's on a spreadsheet and we can look at it so we can visualize it and talk about it, I think that will help everybody. So let's go back to bullet point one. So I'll, I'll shut up now, sir. No, so are we are we okay with bullet point one? Well, with a charge or not? Oh, what? You're talking to your bullet point one? Well, both of them, they're kind of the same thing. Because yeah, yeah. I, in mine, didn't, I'm silent on it, so by implication, but, it, but it see, should that's not. My question is, is that, is that if the stabilization accounts are going to be going forward, be funded through the budget, 
to the operating budget on an annual appropriation, then how do we not use free cash to do some of that? How do we not use free cash? Because we're going to have so much. You have to. Okay, so then the should not has to go. It has to, it has to rely on an appropriation for free cash. For stable, yes, for stable is it, yeah, okay. I don't and think so. I'm just saying, because I just said that we, we don't want to do that, but I, I don't think, think we're ever, to. we're not going to fu fully fund our stabilization if you look out five, six years, five, six, seven years. I mean, we don't have enough free cash even right now, I don't think, maybe close, I don't know. That's not the point. Is it, should can I? <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. I think we have to say we're going to use some free cash to fund stabilization. Yes. Okay. So yes. maybe uh, in the bullet one in my memo, maybe we should say uh, the second line proposed an FY20 operating budget, and the proposed operating budget should not rely on appropriation, and that kind of implicitly. You know, that way you can take the free cash just to put it in stabilization. It's not. Well, the operating budget, if we're comparing 19 to 20, the operating budget for 19 has $300,000 that we raise and appropriate. So that's kind of the, that's the wild card. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we, maybe we. Can that point? Well, the 300000 for the stabilization is, is coming from raise and appropriate. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. So maybe maybe the answer is we keep that number constant because that's what you want to do, right? Keep that constant, ultimately long term. So keep this. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know, even know if I like this. Keep that constant, and then you can uh, move the free cash because we're like I said, I don't think we're really going to fully fund it now. It's a phase in. So if we keep the three hundred thousand constant, I mean that would kind of answer your question, I think, right? On the should and should not. I think Archie's m main point here is that it just shouldn't be should not. We have to make some realizations that we're going to be using some free cash, so we shouldn't be so absolute at this portion of the game. Exactly. So maybe we'll just strike that second sentence from the second from the first bullet point of my memo. It's kind of foolish for any of us to sit here and start saying that we're not going to be using free cash when we don't even have a budget or any new budget initiatives or anything like that in front of us. And we'll, we'll be foolish to even... Right. So maybe... So we, we don't know if someone is going to be asking for like a, mm -hmm. a, a Mars rover or something. So, okay. I, I didn't think that... People I understood that this budget me message is pretty good, but I kind of wanted it to be more broad-based. Because well, this is kind of broad. I mean, it's, well, when there's, is, when there's a lot of should and should nots in there, it's not broad based because we don't know. I mean, I think. So, what if we appropriate three hundred thousand dollars from raise and appropriate for the stabilization fund, and then uh, have no more than a two percent increase in single family tax rate? So that would that would answer that, I think. Why don't we just give those as goals or, or parameters that Angus was funding the budget, and then and then he'll come back and say that's not attainable or it is attainable. Why don't we give it as a goal and let him come back and say it's not attainable? Well, I yeah, think that's, anything's that's attainable. I think the way this is written is it puts the onus on me that if if in order to attain it, I need to propose major changes, you know, to personnel, to board chart. To, level of service, that that needs to be made clear. So you're making an informed decision of, yes, we're meeting our goals, but it's going to cost us X, Y, and Z. See, see, you the voters see to decide we've that's got we all this free cash, and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna ask taxpayers to fund 300000 more when you've got 
when you've got all this money in free cash. I don't get, I don't get it. But we don't, because we don't have a, f a funded stabilization fund. We don't have a funded pension fund. We've got all of these unfunded liabilities. No town in the entire United States has a fully funded pension fund. Okay, throw that away. Yeah, throw that away. The, yeah. We don't have a funded stabilization fund. But we're not that far off. And just something I'm going to tell you later. I found out. So, okay, I, I mean, I, I just find you, we're, we're putting ourselves in a, in a box that we can't, yeah, nothing to do we with can't, it. we can't, I just remember something. It's too early to make these kinds of, uh, you know, rules that we have to, we have to fund the stabilization on 300000 of raise and appropriate when, when we might, when we've got, um, you know, over a million in free cash. It doesn't make any sense. What, what do you, what else, are you going to put, are you going to put all of that money in, say, a, in, in a, a pension fund? What are you going to do with all that free cash? Follow what the DLS said. I mean, maybe you want to... They want us to create an more additional... No, I well, additional yeah, I don't, stabilization they, fund. Okay, yeah. We're I, not I, even I, sure okay, we I, do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't want to do that. But follow what they said, X that. I mean, maybe we should hold this off until we have next week's discussion. I don't know. Maybe it'll be more clear then. Is that all right with you? It is. I think there's some but value I think in some I don't think we should do I, this in one meeting anyway. I, I think it'd be more I productive totally to start agree, getting this done tonight. Because then you okay. can have a draft that integrates Joe's work with my work into a single thing. It'll be shared with the FinCom so they can give you their two can you Can you do a uh, kind of blend these yeah. together? I mean, I, like I said before, I would... Get rid of, get rid of the... Um, the, um, the... Sorry, it's... Yeah, I would take everything from both of them except, like, the, obviously the number one item on yours and, and this. I mean, they're yeah, the same yeah, thing. I yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what, I'm pretty good with all the other ones. Mm. I figured I wrote the police one just for you. <laughs> I think one, one I thing have, I do I want have, to... I have, uh, uh, I have my, one thing I do no. want to highlight, which I think is a really good move, uh, but I, it's a huge amount of work, and I... I we want to do it. I think it's a great thing to do, but I just want to make you aware that this uh, incorporating into a new chart of accounts mm -hmm. is part of the lag time. Because if I get budgets from 24 different sources on January 4th, um, I'm not going to ask the departments to put them into a new structure. That's going to be part of what the town accountant and I are doing is take they mm -hmm. need to put it into a new structure. So that's going to really uh, going to take a little bit. Yeah, it's going to take some time, and then but it'll be fruitful down the road. I think it's going to be great because it'll be clear, and the the work will be on my office to say, okay, we're taking the same expenses, but I'm going to do new structure, new accounts, and the department heads. I think it will go a lot better rather than having them all put things into a different. So, so okay, so let's. But, but the goal that's all toward the goal of transitioning to a new chart of accounts for FY20, uh, which will facilitate uh, getting the new financial software. Which we good, good. All right. Joe, do you have any more questions on it? Nope. All right. Good. So we'll look at our draft next week. Yep. Okay. Next thing is uh, update on mass division of fish and wildlife determination that um, trail corridor maintenance plan is accepted from review under MASH Endangered Species Act. This uh, informational item following up on uh, something you that was before you last spring and uh, this wetland trail corridor maintenance plan. Uh, has received uh, determination that it is exempt from review under the Endangered Species Act, so it's essentially an effective document. I didn't know from reviewing the minutes of when you considered this last spring whether any, it wasn't clear that you formally approved it. You mm -hmm. had urged them to submit it to Natural Heritage, which they've done. So I don't know if this is something you want to vote. Do we have to vote it? The microphone is the long answer. Please. Yeah, I don't think we voted it last spring, if that's no, your question. No, there was nothing in the minutes to say last spring. No. I guess, under, uh, under what authority is this is this being offered, I guess? You know, is this... A if we vote it, all of a sudden, does that mean I can't dig in my backyard because it's spotted sand? No, it's trails. It's trails. 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 No, trails. No, I can't is, walk is, on a trail because I'm too heavy and I'm afraid I'm going to squish the spotted salamanders? 
Well, I guess you know, you get it, my would point. Be, it would be this. Insofar as that there are properties that are under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. that if you were to adopt this policy with regard to trails, because there are certain properties, such as, trails. such as Don. Riverbend, Don. Don, then you would basically say, this is how you want these trails made, made, made done. Um, for example, there are certain properties that are under the care and management of the Conservation Commission, and they would have to, for their properties, adopt this. So, uh, that in that way, you know, you have control over certain of the properties which By are... By adopting this, then, what does it make us do? Is it going to... You understand... It just, it just tells people when they, may, you know, do the trails that they should do it within this, within this parameter. Is that going to cost the town more money? Good. It it could, in a sense, and it, it could have a negative, and that the fact is that it might have, you know, disadvantage of people saying, "Well, I'm not going to too much, too 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 complicated for me to do." Okay, I'm going to take it under advisement. Okay, with you guys, and take it under advisement to do what with it? Not, not not in perpetuity, if that's what you're saying. I don't know. Well, then let's talk about it. I, I will suggest that, as you know, the, the on a separate track, there's this whole issue that Mill Pond's management plan, that will be coming back before this board. Uh, there was a suggestion uh, here of should this document be cross-referenced in the, the Mill Pond's... They're plan. almost kind of, they have some overlap. Right. So I think that could, since we know that's coming back to the agenda... Uh, you know, once we hear comments from the various parties, maybe around the end. You guys can do, we can that do that. That might be one of time to revisit this. We should talk about them both together. I mean, there, there is overlap. It's, it's things, these two type of things scare me. Adopting policies about uh, Endangered Species Act on, on trails. Uh, yeah, so let's table it for tonight, so we're not adopting anything. Mm -hmm. But let's agree to discuss it when we do the, uh, the uh, Mill Pond thing. Okay, so the first is on the uh, Mill Street Bridge. Uh, we did get the draft survey, and I know Mike reviewed that against some information he had in his file. Basically, you know, it's not a totally exact, but it essentially shows us it bisects the bridge. Uh, so this is this was submitted to us for comment. It, it is a draft survey, so uh, I wanted to start there in terms of whether we whether there's anything further that we ought to do on the survey. There's a separate issue which we'll, we'll get to on the <laughs> elevation of the Greater Hall. Okay, hey, is yeah. there anything, um, Angus, that, that we want to do on this? I think based on the information we have on file, we have no reason to think this isn't the best available estimate of, uh, of where the unit flat boundary is. Okay. Um, you know, on that particular picture? No, I thought the boundary. No, that's what we're talking about now. You feel comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So we're, okay, so just for clarity, the boundary is where? It's in the middle. This says it's, I'm interpreting this, that it's in the middle of the bridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the past, we were told it's more on the Newburyport side. No, that we had less, less of it. It oh, yeah, it was not, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it's more what he was saying. No, it's what Glenn said. It's what Glenn said. More, and we always thought that they own more of the more bridge. Of the bridge. Well, that's what we were told. That's. Yeah, yeah. But now we're finding out when, when you, when you look at the documents and the legal stuff that it's not the case. So that's why I was asking for some clarity. That's what the this. The problem is, is that by definition, the, the, the boundary is the middle of the artichoke. And over years, and um, could change that. So, so hypothetically, by the boundary being in the middle of the bridge, the uh, middle the town, of the stream, middle, middle of the stream. I'm sorry. That um, West Newbury now could be um, half, ha half, pay half of the bridge. It would, yeah. I mean, well, it, it depends upon. I think it's it's not just like okay, you have the bridge. You have to talk about. Um, more factors than that, you know, what the expense of improving the West Newbury side versus the Newburyport side. 
Okay, so hypothetically, if they had to build up more rocks on their side because their rocks are more decrepit or they didn't have... Or we have to. Or we, we have, have to. to. Well, yeah, well, we have to. They didn't um, pass, you know, or their side passed the low test. Our side didn't pass the low test, so we were going to have to fortify those, it or whatever. Those are all issues that could come up. Mm-hmm. Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. We don't vote on this, right? No. Well, the only thing we could dispute it, but I don't. I think I mean, there's, there's don't nothing to be gained. Yeah. Except, really. I'm just, yeah. I mean, I mean, from the municipal boundary, there's really nothing to be gained. I mean, you're not going to be able to really reasonably argue that it's five feet this way or five feet that way. Got it. Right. Okay. okay. Well, saying is, so the other issue is quite interesting. It's a bit complicated. So this is to do with the uh, Newburyport Climate Resiliency Planning which includes in some potential future capital investment to increase the elevation of the dam. Uh, Mike has oh. asked me that the dam, <laughs> the dam did in fact overtop in 1936, if I'm remembering mm-hmm. correctly, uh, which he had that number right in his head. I was very impressed. Uh, uh, when I brought it to him, he said, oh, actually it did, because part of their concern is with the climate change and increased sea levels, there has not been detailed modeling in this part of the world yet, but in Boston. Do they Park, know that the artichoke's not part of the ocean? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. That. Yeah. Uh, and so they don't know how much elevation might rise. They don't know how much they might increase the elevation of the dam. That has clear ripple effects if they were to elevate the dam on our water supply. That'll create a big issue. It would create a big issue. So I've looped in Mike Boutte, and it's basically, we're, we're kind of right in the middle, right at kind of at the beginning of what I think is a pretty big issue. So I wanted to bring you guys into it. So why are they saying, why do they want to do this potentially? Why are they considering it? In well, case there's backflow from the Merrimack. Correct. Right. Which was, exactly. which was backflow from the Merrimack. If the elevation were to increase to a point that during the river water was contaminated in the water. So well, no, no, not that, but also uh-huh. salt water. Because remember, is that it's a tidal river up until the, I think, April, April. April Dam. Is it close? Mm-hmm. I mean, I never really looked at that. What, what do you mean? The Merrimack elevation compared well, to... Well, look at, look at, just when you're driving on 113, you can see that the, the, the when... When the uh, tide is up, and everything, there's not that much difference between the really? spillway between the level of the of the outflow to the Merrimack and the level of the reservoir. It's never, only what would you say, Mike? Like a foot or eighteen inches? It depends. I mean, it, it, it well, it's going to rise yeah, and fall with the tide. It's pretty high right pretty, now. Pretty close, yeah. Now, as long as the water's spilling over, there's never a problem. It would only be a circumstance where. It go the other. It would go the other way. And if, and, and if you had, if you had tidal conditions and. You know, yeah. the, the, so if you're going from Newburyport, if you're going from West Newbury to Newburyport, on the left hand side, if that comes back underneath 120, uh, 113, or, 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 or over, and then goes up, and then goes over because it's always spilling this way, going to the Merrimack. They're afraid that the sea levels and stuff are going to rise, and then. It could go the other way, go the other way. So that's interesting because um, is this a way of putting off the bridge, or is it, when does this capital plan of um, of um, global warming um, come into effect? Friday. Friday. <laughs> well, and you'll see in the in the communication thread, I've been trying to get at what are the background documents. I have to think there's some committee or there's some reporter. Yeah. Have there's you got those yet? I haven't gotten those yet, and it's been. Stated on, on the conference call uh, two weeks ago, and we have another one this Wednesday, that uh, because the consultant was kind of caught blindsided too. This isn't part of their scope. It's a huge impact on potentially on the project. So they're saying, well, when what when might we know what the dam elevation might be changed to, so we can scope out what that would cost us in terms of our design of the current bridge. And, and uh, John Eric, the engineer. Newburyport said it might be a year before we know what elevation the dam would be. So this is a this is a big. I I, I, I have to say I was yeah. kind of like the 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 dams are at least one of the dams is, would be completely in West Newbury and the the they're sort of bringing us in. Oh oh, this might affect your well field. Uh, you might want to check into that. Like like the fact that they would. <laughs> 
say that they could arbitrarily raise the level of the dam at the one in, um, uh, at say it at uh, on the, uh, on Fulton Street without without even contacting us. It seems it seems sort of outrageous. I thought you couldn't mess around with things that affected other people's well fields. Yeah, I thought the I, answer is is that if you do something artificially. That like causes a damage, damage to a, another person. You're responsible for it. A dam is artificially? Yeah, yeah. I'm just want to make sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and but there's, there's no, there's no, there's no crazy uh, global warming law that says they can do. It. I'm not. I mean, no. I'm being a layman. There's no crazy thing that's saying, well, global warming's coming, so you can do whatever you do to protect yourself. No. No. Yeah. If you, I don't you, know. If you were to. Not that great. It's, it's traditional. What's going I mean, on actually, there are no, numerous cases of dealing with the idea of people who put in dams and then other people's property got flooded. Mm -hmm. And the idea was, well, no, that's a, that, you've just damaged that person's property. Now you have to down Well, I understand that, floor. but my, I agree. You can't have, like, even on your own property, you can't have, you can't create runoff that would affect another person's property. Mm -hmm. Right? Same, so, it's the same idea. So it's the same. So they can't do anything that could affect our water system. Or that they would have to pay us to replace it because but your because your thing is having runoff. They could um, do it that there's no water at all that comes over there, right? I mean, it will, how would it affect our uh, well field? Well, if you increase the area, the first well field is a shallow well. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's, it's that as the idea is that surface water could go into you know even though it's a sh shallow shallow well, it is purified by going through the different soils. Mm -hmm. If there's a cross connection at that point, that would be a contamination issue. In other words, it would be like... Mm -hmm. No, I understand. Yeah, that. okay. Understand. You don't want surface water going into your... Into your well, I don't know. Obviously, it's something that the town would hold the city of Newburyport responsible for. But, but then, but if they ruined our well field, then they'd be able to sell us all the water and they'd make more money. Or they'd have to give it to us for free. <laughs> so, Angus, my first question would be, Wayne, our new DPW director. Yes. Was he part of any of these discussions when he was with Newburyport? Does he, he know was, anything about we, this? We had an initial, uh, we had two initial meetings when we were scoping the uh, contract with the engineering firm. Mm -hmm. Wayne was part of a large group, probably eight people on the city's behalf. These more recent conference calls, he has not been on. So mm -hmm. obviously, as a new DPW director, he will be on. And I've looped him in all of his correspondence, and I see him as a key, playing a key role. But mm -hmm. essentially, you know, so what they're talking about has major potential implications, cost implications for the town of West Newbury. So the message that I plan to deliver, and I, I knew I would hear what I'm hearing, is that we, the town, need to be at the table for the, when those decisions are made. Oh, yeah. Um, and there might be so other alternatives that to raising the dam to provide climate resiliency. Mm -hmm. Meaning they could, put in, they could put in safeguard measures, you know, like, you know, a temporary dam structure, you know, in, in those rare times when there would be a flooding, and that would basically, you know, preserve the area, you know, to protect and preserve that area, so. They could do, or as um, I think one person suggested, um, further dredge um, that area, um, make it, you know, more water storage within it, and that would not, you know, raise the water level. I mean, there are some other things that they have to do. But that wouldn't protect that well. Right, yeah, yeah. That's a different problem. Yeah. It gives them more water, yeah, so it doesn't, that's not what they're, they're not worrying about. Are you looking for some? Are you looking for some? Is this um, informational, or are you looking for direction I on something? I think direction for your I'm, I'm conference call on Wednesday, and I can now deliver it with the support of the board of selectmen. I mean, I do what, what you all would say. Uh, what message are you going to be delivering? That that you know, if before you make a decision to change the scope of the engineering for the bridge based on a potential future increase in elevation of the dam, we need to be it has impact on our water you know, supply. We're a party to that. Okay, decision. so that one, and that that message, and that we would like to, or do we, or do we, can we even say that we would want to be part of, um, or we're very 
nervous or we're very whatever about maybe this could be impacting our well, water supply also. They'd have to guarantee that it would not affect it. But, but reading the tone of these, uh, I just didn't like the tone of the email. So you ought to check into this. No, they ought to yeah, check into yeah, it's not our responsibility. Like, it isn't our responsibility. You brought it up. So yeah. yeah. So I would. That's the message on the next part, saying that yep. it's not our responsibility. You're doing the changing, correct? It's your responsibility to make sure that you're putting proper safeguards in place. That whatever you do because of China, climate change is not going to affect our water supply. Yeah. Not our responsibility. Yep. And okay. I will say there was a an email that I received earlier today from Mike Goutte, which is essentially delivering the same message on behalf of the Water Commission, saying in the future, if you decide to meet with officials, uh, will you please include the Board of Water Commissioners? Um, I don't think we need to be included in the repair on the bridge, but if any plans are being made to raise the dam elevation, we would need to be included. Okay. Got okay. any other good news? Can of worms. Next one? And it's come up very quickly. You know, this issue wasn't part of the scoping this summer. It wasn't, you know, it just came up. Wouldn't you think that would be the, the first other thing? The, the other bridge going between the, uh, 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 the other chunk. I mean, that, that is a very high off. Oh, uh, Roger Street? Ro that. You're talking about Roger Street? Yeah, well, Roger Street, that bridge isn't very high off the no, not at all. Off the water. Uh, raise that. Uh, that's going to be uh, It'll flood it. a fording crossing. Then. <laughs> that's going to cost them a lot of money. Okay, next, please. Uh, next item is just informational. Um, part of uh, Maya's proposed coverage for uh, our insurance has uh, changed to include a cyber, uh, some amount of cyber coverage, cyber protection of different. Uh, uh, you know, crimes, breaches, and so forth. So I know it's been an issue of interest to the board, so we included the draft policy as I said earlier tonight. Mary and I do have a meeting with Maya this Thursday to review terms for uh, 2019 coverage. So if there are any questions on this, if you get them to us before Thursday, we can review those with the insurer. How much extra is this? Uh, it's not extra. It's actually built into the, it's no uh, cost. Really? Really. Well, for yes. time. Well, well not, not, not no cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing no, no cost. Into that. Okay. Yeah. It's built into the rate. Yes. Okay, follow up on meeting assignments? Are, they Are you really done with this? Yep. Okay. okay. Nope. I think we're all set. You're going to merge those two things together. We're going to, um, I think we're all set. You? Okay. Um, placing items on the future agenda, Joe? So, um, we're confirmed for December 3rd. Is there a time that we're confirmed for? Uh, I will check with Gary. I talked to him last week to confirm that, and he said he sent the notice out to his committee. He hasn't heard back, but he basically he said yes. The meeting is on for December Why? 3rd. Does that matter to you? No, I just wondered when it's going to be. Yeah, no, like, I didn't know if it mattered no. so we could we could give yeah, them you want to give them the time. time. I, I wasn't saying I'm just I don't saying care. making sure whatever they seven can, o'clock whatever they can all be here. Okay. That's seven o'clock unless anything different. You want to try to make it earlier? If they want to make care. it earlier. I don't care. Earlier is always better. Doesn't matter. Okay. I'll see if they can do six, if not seven, but I'll Or six thirty, whatever. Let's start with six and start moving up. Okay. Okay. So the only other thing I had was uh, the at the last meeting we said that uh, school funding to discuss Archie's comment was supposed to be on this meeting agenda and it's not. I brought it up. That yeah, was on the prepay. Yeah. yeah. What did we do? Why did we? I think we had it on the draft agenda and we felt I, I think when we spoke last Wednesday it was a pretty crowded agenda and. Uh, I can't remember. It was a lot to put together with the budget message and the calendar and Thanksgiving. We'll do it next week. It week. just wasn't seen as timely. The chair and yeah. I, I didn't disagree did, with that. Did, did, was it supposed to be? Yeah, we said this meeting. Okay. You know what we need to start doing? Let's not say particular meetings from now on. Let's just say it as soon as possible. 
Is, I, I didn't catch that. That's my that's my fault. Sorry about oh, that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, I mean, I thought what Archie said was good. Uh, uh, good question. We were going to invite the other. Right, but is, is there anything lost? And also yeah. related to school funding, we were going to have a. Uh, but he's working on that. Are we, are we actually thinking yeah. about that? Yeah, I've talked what? with the finance directors of the other towns, and. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, so that's it's going to take some time to figure out a date everyone can it do. It kind of feels like December's slipping away. It is what I mean. It's I mean, I don't know, John. Yeah. I don't know that I can have more conversations. Than no, I wasn't. Cri that wasn't criticizing. I'm just saying. I'm, I, I'm just looking at the calendar. Do you want? Yeah. What else do you want to do by it? About it? We're, Nothing. I'm not. We're inviting I, them, but no. I'm, I'm, I'm just so we don't feel like we're inviting you, inviting them, and we're saying, saying to the finance directors, "Hey, get your people together and let's have a joint meeting." Yep. Are we afraid that the message is not being taken back to them? Is that what we're no, afraid of? No. Well, I think you extended the invitation. Yeah. 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 So I wasn't saying anything. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's just you only can wait for them. Crunch. I mean, we want to have things on the agenda when we're well prepared and have things to talk about. When they haven't responded. Do. Basically, is where we're at. Right. Well, the other the other uh, potential complication is uh, it's not a complication. It's just kind of a side issue. I met with the We Are Kentucky group about two weeks ago. And they're interested in having a meeting with all of the town finance people. So I'm trying to get that together and trying to get a bigger meeting together. And uh, what is whatever it? is busy. We'll wait. Okay. But in terms of the prepayment, prepayment, um, yeah, I mean, we we just we wanted that to have some informed yeah, I'm sorry. That, that discussion of that. Okay. And, uh, there's no there's no panic about that. Okay. Yeah, it didn't seem that there would be anything Okay, wrong sorry, I didn't know that you wanted it specifically on this. That's my that's my fault. Um, that's when you do that too, have the joint. We can have the joint meeting maybe at Kentucky, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than them feel like they have to come here. That we yeah, have I think it. That makes sense. Have it down there. Sure. Okay, you have anything? Anybody else have anything? No. Okay, so next Monday. We're going to try for six, and if we don't get six, we'll just start six thirty seven. We'll just go on from there. Yep. So how are we actually? I know we talked about this a little bit last time. So how are we actually going to structurally edit that document, Angus? The the finance policies. Yeah. Uh, what I'm recommending is that we start with the finance policies that we have. And then build the uh, the, uh, the LS the around LS policies into them because I I have them both in Word format so that's that's it's a lot of a lot of building <laughs> it is it's not a minor thing to just adopt a lot of policies I'm trying to do it right well, I think we all are yeah okay yeah. but no it's not now what about um simple. what about um the suggestions from some people on the uh, FinCom about putting it up on a screen. I think that'd be great. We did we did approve the order of the screen, so but it's not going to be here for next Monday. Probably not. No, but we could set up a, a slide projector. I would do that definitely. Yeah. Is that what I mean? yeah. Yeah. So we can all be looking at the language and have red lines as we go. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.